one of the things that I personally have always felt is that this particular space would have benefited greatly from a piece of sculpture. The first time I looked at the work that she was proposing for this facility, it was a aha moment. This is just the right piece for the right place at the right time. This is an idea I had a number of years ago to take these like sort of drawing shapes and make them into sculptural drawings. And the idea was really about like taking the line and making that into a sculpture. And when Stanford came to me wanting some artwork for this space, I immediately thought that this would be the perfect location for that idea. The inspiration for this piece was that the faculty and students wanted to honor Dean Piso. Since Dean's tenure was coming to an end and everybody felt very strongly about what he had accomplished, how much we really owed him for the effort he had made, that the idea floated that maybe this piece could be dedicated to Dean Piso. And that was embraced by everybody. We were initially shown the work of six sculptors. All of them were good, but the committee was unanimous in its selection of Allison. One of the things that I did during the time that I served as Dean at Stanford was to really try to address the interconnection between creativity that comes through the arts that also is manifested in science. Proteins achieve functionality when they go from a non-dimensional shape to a folded three-dimensional shape. And that's fascinating to me because when I start these drawings, the lines are actually non-dimensional. And then I expand them out into a three-dimensional surface or surfaces that then, in a sense, become functional as sculpture. The whole piece is about 54 feet by about 20 feet wide and this has an aluminum structure and a acrylic sort of laminate with a dichroic film on top of that. And all the acrylic is screwed onto the aluminum. The drawings are done fully in the computer, so the first drawings I do are in Maya, and then those drawings are then given to my fabricator. That gives us the outline of what all the pieces should be and we have to kind of extrapolate that down to start the aluminum structure. These pieces are the same shape, folded and stretched three different ways, and the process of building it took six months. It became evident early on that this thing would have to be really carefully coated because in terms of the plexiglass, there were over 10,000 parts. So we came up with a system pretty quickly um, as to how those things would be numbered so that we would have a part and each individual part would have a location. We would be able to figure out where that location is. And that way we knew when things were welded together that the shape is what it should be because it follows that 3D model. If one were to really see the fabrication of this piece, it is no different in many respects than the signs that is taken here. The precision, the involvement, the thought process, the attention to detail, I think speak to the signs in many ways. And so in that respect, this is an ideal piece for not just what it symbolizes, but how it came to be. What's interesting about this project and what makes it unlike many uh, of our projects is we were able to work with the fabricator, Chris, and the artist, Allison, for the full length of the installation. In this case, for example, Allison's actually literally hands-on. It's very helpful to have the fabricator here because uh, it's a very complex series of objects. We work uh, seven hours a day on site. It's just very time-consuming and challenging in that sense. It's taking a long time. I'm really interested in the idea of this sculpture being almost alive and a sculpture that you would never feel that you fully understood or knew. So that each time you came you would see something different and as you walk in the sculpture looks one way and as you walk around it it completely changes and not only changes in color but it also changes in shape. I look at the threefold in a linear and interconnected way. Uh, that moves back and forth from one shape to another that connects our missions in research, education, and patient care. I'm really impressed with the people at Stanford because I feel that they were very brave to just plunge in and take a chance with me in this sculpture. It is a beautiful piece that in many ways represents the science that is being done. Everybody has their own reconstruction in their own mind of what it brings to them. 
It is so meaningful to know that faculty and members of the community wanted to not only commemorate art in the Learning and Knowledge Center and throughout the medical school, but to link it in some way to my work and my name and my efforts on behalf of the School of Medicine is a just deeply, deeply meaningful thing for which I'm extremely grateful.